Now, although this has happened quite last minute, we're deeply fortunate to have in Danny Finkelstein, one of the Times' foremost political commentators, and there could be nobody better to talk us through what's going on, but we don't do that on this show, so never mind him. Glenn Moore, you're a comedian. What do you make of all this? Uh, well, firstly, it's it's heavy. Like you, I, I, I resent him doing it so shortly before we were going <laughs> to... We'd, we'd already covered... The, we were going to do like a, a, a story about a fish that looked like a cheeseburger or something like that. Yeah. And now we've got to deal with like real high the, politics. Wither the cheeseburger, yes. I feel... I feel sorry for Nadine Dorries because her resignation just got completely ignored. I think she expected it to make headlines longer than it did. And I think sandwiched between Schofield and Boris, they're just not as big. <laughs> they're just not a big resignations. And it's 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 a lot for the UK Parliament, I think. I think Rishi's going to have to start next week's Prime Minister's questions by looking down the lens of a camera and saying, first of all, are you OK? <laughs> It's a lot. It's it's it's. A, I wasn't expecting him to resign now. I would have expected him to resign like David Cameron did as soon as he stepped down. You sort of mm -hmm. go. You've already done the top level position. You'll never reach that level again. Why why would you go back to being a backbencher? That's the thing that didn't really make any sense to me. Did it make sense to you? No, uh, no. I mean, but very little makes sense to me anymore. Uh, you know, and right. I, I, I kind of um. And you, I think the thing with Boris Johnson is one's tempted to sort of, a bit like people always did with Donald Trump, who we'll talk about in a bit, but one's always tempted to think he's playing some kind of four-dimensional chess and everything's very, very clever. Uh, but uh, but maybe it just isn't, and he isn't either. Yeah, it, it, it seems, I mean, it, it seems like he's trying to take the high ground about the whole Partygate thing, but I think it seems more suspicious to sort of resign in connection with that, in the yeah. same way that, like, a, a traveling fun fair that has really rickety roller coasters and you think well what could be more trustworthy than a ride that every few months has to move to a different part of the country it seems strange in the middle of the investigation to sort of go i'm actually just going to step back actually from this it, that that's the bit that seems a bit odd danny what what's going on really what's going on <clears throat> well i you know i think actually it's as simple as it looks i think uh he has fallen because the scandal meant that he was going to be removed from Parliament by the voters of his own constituency. He probably would have lost the next general election, by the way, in that constituency. So that's an extra factor. Um, but you know, th there are two things going on. One is there are a group of people, of which he is one, who still believe he's really popular mm -hmm. and that he is going to um, that he's the future of the Conservative Party, not the past. And there are also a group of people in the Conservative Party who realise he is no longer popular and not, not willing to stand by him anymore and think it's all over for him. And ironically enough, he's also a member of that group <laughs> too. Um, that's why he's resigned his seat, after all. If he believed he could win triumphantly in a by-election, he certainly wouldn't have done, you know, he certainly wouldn't have done that. He'd let this process play out and achieved his vindication that way. Uh, and you may say, well, those are completely contradictory. You cannot simultaneously believe that you're very popular and that you aren't. Uh, but this is Boris Johnson we're talking about. Um, and he's capable of believing completely contradictory things. Just for instance, uh, he, he said he wants the Conservative Party to return to the true faith of cutting taxes. When he was Prime Minister, who drove up public spending in a way that made tax cutting completely impossible, mm. even if it was a good idea. Those were completely contradictory ideas. He also, as we famously know, wrote uh, two articles about the European Union, one in favour of it and one against. Now, I have to admit something um, I'm slightly embarrassed by in a way. Um, when he decided to leave, that he was going to support Brexit, mm -hmm. I accepted the idea that he was a genuine Eurosceptic and that this was an ex, uh, an expression of his view. And friends of mine, including, you know, prominent people like David Cameron and George Osborne, were pretty sceptical about my opinion at that time. And I argued the toss with them. And I think I was probably wrong. Um, and that just, this statement is so wayward, um, in which he claims that he has had to be removed because there is a conspiracy to return to the European Union and he has to be removed before that conspiracy mm. can advance. Not one aspect of that is true. Mm. And someone who's so willing to say something so completely at variance with political logic or the truth, well, I don't any longer think he deserved the benefit of the doubt I gave him. Do you think, I mean, the Nadine Dorries angle here, look, I appreciate it's a bit like trying to analyse precisely why your cat brings in a dead mouse, but why do you think Nadine <laughs> Dorries has uh, res has stepped down from her seat? Does it have anything, I mean, because the, con the, the, the conspiracy theory, the projections are, hey, perhaps she's going to hand over her seat to Boris Johnson. Is that plausible? I don't think it is plausible. That doesn't mean to say she didn't momentarily <laughs> think it was plausible. Look, it's obvious this happened very, very quickly because yep. in the morning she said she wasn't going to do that and in the afternoon she did it. Uh, there wasn't many hours between those. So it could have been um, that she simply feels incredibly passionately about him and she shared his rage 
uh, you know, there was an element of his statement that was pure rage, mm. uh, and she she is extremely loyal to him. Um, and you know, it's not a loyalty I share or I think is think is justified, but you know, but it's definitely a genuine political and personal emotion. Uh, and maybe that was one of the reasons why she did it, and possibly muddled in there with some half baked thoughts about him running in her seat as well. Um, but I don't think there's any kind of well worked out plan because. You you know you you have to do those kind of things incredibly carefully, and it wouldn't have come off anyway. Yeah. He isn't going to win a seat in Parliament wherever he he fights at the moment. Really, that, well, know, that's it, that's inter- that's interesting that you'd be you'd be confident of that. You think he really wouldn't? I mean, Glenn, look, if 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 you were Boris Johnson, and God don't knows, put me into this God, situation. God knows, please. one day you may be. I mean, yeah. could, you, could you could you be bothered with any of this? You know, he's done the big job. He's gone down in history. He's achieved Brexit, if one believes that is an achievement. He now can earn huge amounts of money doing basically whatever the hell he likes with zero responsibility zero responsibility at all you'd sort of be glad to be out wouldn't you I don't know. I think his his interest was always in making headlines as best he could. Like when he said he was you know he called together a big press conference years ago to announce he wasn't going to run for the leadership. This is the sort of thing he does. It's, it's, I, I you know there's there's part of me that sort of thinks he doesn't actually want to step down as an MP but knew that by doing so, that would be, you know, that, that's going to dominate the news cycle for a little while. Mm. Um, and so I I don't know how he'd be able to get back again, unless he suddenly ran, in, in the bought a house in the Dean Doris constituency and ran in that in that seat. I I, I, I think he'll he'll just do the, the next thing that would make him sort of dominate the news cycle, whether it would be writing a salacious book or, or you know, or, or, or getting a TV presenting job. Anything like that is what, is, is what he'll move on to next. I don't think he's ever going to want to go for some sort of quiet... Life and the Batman just clearly were not for him. Yeah, Danny, what the the spectacle yet again of the Conservative Party sort of tearing themselves apart over this, sort of backbencher sniping against ba- other backbencher on Twitter and so on. Do, why do they do this? Do they? Is it because they believe? I mean, as you said earlier, well, that there is just this huge actual sort of bedrock of support for Boris Johnson in the country that Westminster is sort of too far up itself to notice, or can they just not help themselves? Look, the, the ones who don't support him can't help what he's trying to do, and what he's trying to do is justify himself. The most important thing to understand about you know what he's done is three hundred years of prime ministers, and nothing, something like this has never happened to any of them. Nobody has fallen fallen in these circumstances from office or from parliament. Um, nobody else, no other prime minister has been um, found guilty by any kind of commission of having lied to parliament in this way. And naturally speaking, he doesn't want to live with that. Um, and, you know, if you look at how Spiro Agnew or Richard Nixon fought their own disgrace uh, so that they wouldn't have to live with it for years in retirement, uh, you can see not only that they can be very tenacious, but lots of people uh, will support them for the vindication um, of their political position, because a lot of people trusted him when others of us said, you know, my position was always, I think Boris Johnson is an immensely skilled uh political columnist and a brilliant wit um and um i have often in in the past enjoyed his company we've never particularly been close or friendly uh, you know or friends but we but i've always enjoyed him um at, but he isn't suitable to be prime minister and other people said yes he is uh, and now they want to vindicate that judgment. So they're quite angry. Uh, and the rest of people in the Conservative Party, uh, you know, are struggling against that kind of headwind. There's mm-hmm. another element muddled into it, which is there's also an attempt to prove that Brexit works. My view is that is the argument that it was going to work economically was always unlikely. What was what is you know, still completely plausible is that the decision to leave the European Union was constitutionally the right thing to do, right? That's, I don't believe ultimately on balance that it was the right thing, but there's certainly a constitutional argument for it. And um, unfortunately, don't seem to have the patience to to uh, yeah. to allow that position to be to be vindicated, even though they themselves have said it may take 50 years. 